So uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Darren Mahirin, and I'm a local artist here in Fort Collins. Um, when the TED organizers approached me about speaking at this event today, I was really struggling with the decision because I've always been a visual artist. Um, I'm not much of a speaker. So uh, I kind of sat around and really debated on how to go about this and tried to write a speech and worked on it for days. And I realized that I needed to approach this like I did my art. I needed to tell the story with photos. So that's what I'm going to do. My name is Darren Mahirin and I am an artist. I opened Summit Studios Photography in January of 2006 in the Gallery Underground in October of 2007. But let's rewind. I was drawing before I was walking, and I knew I wanted to be involved in the arts when I grew up. Uh, not like this. Yeah, more like this. I was a good kid, but I always had a problem with authority. This is me after I crashed my dad's van. You can see here that I haven't always had such a luxurious mustache. A lot of people told me that I couldn't make a living as an artist, but I had other plans. I took drawing and painting classes, and I was voted class artist my senior year in high school. I went on to film school in Orlando. Everything was on track until I realized film school wasn't what I had anticipated. I quit film school and I picked up the bass guitar. After several years as a musician and working odd jobs, I was starting to believe that my childhood critics might be right. I continued to push forward, however, looking for my calling. In 2004, I picked up my first digital camera and it changed my life. All of the wild ideas I had roaming through my head finally had an outlet. I began shooting concept-driven photos and taught myself Photoshop so that I could make the images more surreal and polished. As you might have heard, the South isn't the most nurturing climate for artistic expression, and something about the clean mountain air was pulling me like a magnet to Fort Collins. I had never visited here, but had heard many good things, so I picked up and moved. I opened Summit Studios in January of 2006 on the top floor in the historic Avery Building and decided to go for broke. I was going to produce the kind of images I wanted, and if nobody liked them, screw it. I figured I could always be a janitor. I began working on some surrealistic photos that told stories. The stories were often religious, mythological, or political in nature. You might say I have a dark, twisted sense of humor. For example, this image called Persuasion was conceived due to some persistent young fellows who kept visiting my door from some little church, I think, somewhere in Utah. Many of my Colorado friends assured me that Fort Collins was not yet ready for my brand of somewhat controversial art, and in some ways they were right. I took my art around to nearly all of the art galleries in town and none were interested. It turned out that my work didn't fit into their western art motif. Initially I was discouraged, but soon I realized there was something going on here just below the surface. As I frequented more of the local coffee shops and pubs, I discovered a burgeoning world of imaginative and sometimes edgy local art. No cowboys, no Native Americans, no horses, no aspen trees, no raku pots. So I scheduled my next show at a coffee shop and soon after a bar. Both were quite successful. Soon after, a smaller coffee shop was interested in my work and I hung a few pieces. I stopped in after a week to see if anything had been sold and saw that there was a piece missing off the wall. I asked the owner who had bought it and she said it actually hadn't sold as she pulled the piece from behind the counter. She explained that a customer had found it offensive and she wasn't in the business of displaying art that aggravated her customers. She was in the business of selling coffee. Fair enough, I said, but then who's gonna hang the art that isn't considered palatable by the mainstream? And then the answer came to me, I was. Here's that offensive piece, by the way. I opened the Gallery Underground in the basement of the same Avery building in October of 2007 as a safe haven for unconventional artists with the mission to create a space that wouldn't censor art, a place for the community to have a beer, to talk to artists in person, in a non-stuffy environment. Our only rule? No Western art. What business did I have open in a gallery when I had barely even stepped foot in one? Well, that's the whole point of the entrepreneurial spirit. I wanted to do things differently. Instead of charging a percentage on sales, I decided to rent out wall space instead. You see, most galleries charge their artists 40 to 50 percent of whatever the piece sells for. The problem with this model is that the artists then have to raise their prices by 40 to 50 percent to make any profit at all. 
This may work in a large market like New York or San Francisco, but in smaller towns like Fort Collins, this can force the price up to a point that it's no longer affordable to the general public. I split the space up in such a way that everyone was responsible for hanging and displaying their art as they saw fit and paying a small fee for that space. I also recognized that many of the artists needed somewhere to work out of, so our next step was to convert much of the gallery into studio spaces and give the artists keys so they could come and go as they liked. We started the gallery in 2007 with three resident starving artists. Three and a half years later, the gallery had grown to 20 resident starving artists. We went from worrying about having enough money to pay the rent to having a pretty substantial waiting list of artists to get in. Now let me be clear, the gallery was never really profitable, but we did break even. And for a bunch of artists who previously had no home, that was pretty good. Everyone was selling and we were busier each month thanks to sponsors like New Belgium Brewery and some really stellar art by so many great local artists over the years. The gallery became a place for the community to come and connect, to be seen, to talk about art, to have a beer with friends. It was a true art party each and every first Friday. I began getting requests from other businesses to showcase their products or use the gallery as a way to reach out to the community. Here you can see FC Bikes who handed out free bike lights two years in a row. The second year they gave out 2,000 lights in just over two hours. Panda Bikes, a local bamboo bicycle company, also brought a few of their bikes down to display and were able to really connect with the community and find out what they were looking for. And I think they got a couple sales out of it as well. In January of 2011, we became a victim of our own success. On our busiest night to date, the police showed up and fined us for serving alcohol without a license. In our defense, we had used the same bartender for the previous three years. We had a strictly enforced two beer only rule and she always checked IDs. Either way though, the party was over. Everyone was asked to dump out their beers and the police filed out to a disgruntled crowd. Moments later, the fire department arrived. Much has been written about this in the local press. Some of the information has been incorrect. Here are the facts. When the fire department showed up, they were actually very polite and professional. We had wall-to-wall -wall people in the building and a single staircase exit, which can be seen here. They asked us to calmly and safely get the crowd out of the building, which we did. They asked what our occupancy was. I explained that it had never been established, but I acknowledged that we were probably well over it. He gave me his card and said that I needed to contact the fire department to get our occupancy set. Over the next few weeks, we had two meetings with the fire marshal. We were told that even though the basement space was 3,600 square feet and fully sprinklered, that since there was only one exit and it was a staircase, our new occupancy would be set at 49. Our only other option was for the owners to tunnel an enclosed hallway through the middle of a retail space upstairs with a push bar exit door that fed out to the sidewalk. Not only would this be excessively expensive, we're pretty sure Alpine Arts, the store upstairs, wouldn't be interested in a dividing hallway running the length of their store. I explained to the fire marshal this was a popular business in the community, that it served a great service to the artists and that we wouldn't be able to stay open with a 49 occupancy. I inquired what we should do and his reply was that it was unsafe due to the layout and we should look for a new location. I told him I understood and thanked him for his time. The truth is, as sad as I was to see it go, I really did understand. They were just doing their job. If there was a fire down there, it could have turned out horrible. Nobody wanted that. I then had a meeting with the 20 artists and asked them what they wanted to do. The only answer we seemed to come up with was to close. With 20 artists and a minimum of one spouse or child or friend for each artist, we were at 40 just on our own. That left nine customers to be able to access the building at any time on First Friday. We limped along like this for a couple of months, 49 of us downstairs and a line of 200 plus upstairs wrapping around the building. And it was a line that didn't move very fast. People were unhappy, the energy was gone, so we closed. Several of the artists approached me about opening a new gallery. Brian Collins, a successful painter who had been with me since day one, took the lead and found the new building. This is the building here on Jefferson, just a block away from the gallery underground, but this time it was on ground level. None of the problems inherit with the basement space. He negotiated with the owners and was offered a fair price. The artists were ready to move in. He asked me for advice, and the only thing I told him was to be sure to play by the rules, get your gallery liquor license, make sure you have the right number of fire exits. Those were the areas we had made mistakes. That's all. We have a great art scene here. We have wonderful, supportive community. Everything else will simply fall into place. And this is the part where things get weird. Brian did contact the fire marshal, who did indeed do a walkthrough, and in an email to Brian and his landlord, 
we're told that even though the space was 1,900 square feet and there were two ground level fire exits and it had a previous occupancy of 299, that because it was going to be an art gallery, the new occupancy was going to be set at 49. So here's my fear. What happens to a city who claims to want to be an art destination and then doesn't provide an outlet for the very artists that are at its core? So I'm going to switch gears. Check out this bike photo. I actually was hired to shoot these for the city of Fort Collins. I love living in a place where the city approaches an artist like myself and says, hey, we need to make these safety posters, but we don't want people to just walk by and ignore them. The message is important. My response to them, let's make them edgy, vibrant. Let's make them tell a story. The city didn't blow me off. They listen. But a city is never a they. It's individuals that matter. And the bike coordinator, David Kemp, happens to be that individual. He made this happen. He believed in my wild ideas, and these bike posters became a phenomenon. As a matter of fact, we've had bike coordinators from cities around the country calling, asking to use them. But the point isn't about my photo or these posters. It's about the city recognizing five years ago that we needed a liaison between what was beginning to happen with our bike scene and the local government. We needed someone to take the growing group of cyclists and steer them in the right direction. I'm not sure anyone can predict that creating a position like a bike coordinator would eventually bring so much positive attention and revenue to our city. Fort Collins is a real leader in the bike world. We have excellent bike lanes, bike paths, bike parking, bicycle safety and awareness. We now have races where the riders fill up every hotel room in town with cyclists from around the world. All because instead of getting pissed off at a few kids on fixies, the city decided to get behind bikes. I wonder what would happen if the city truly decided to get behind the arts. And you know what I fear the most? Is losing the artists. If they don't have a place to show their art, what will this town look like in five years? The majority of the Gallery Underground artists have been involved in making our town a more wonderful place. They have painted the electrical boxes, the horses, the pianos that help make our little town more unique and beautiful. It shouldn't be whether the city allows artists to grow here. The city should encourage artist growth here. The city has the power to foster the local artist movement just as it did the bicycle movement. So how do we solve this problem? When my photo got taken down at the coffee shop, I had an easy answer, but for this problem, I do not. I challenge all of you to reach out into this community and let's figure out how to make Fort Collins an art destination the right way from the ground up.
Thank you, guys.